Joy. Okay, so who wants to go first? I'll go first. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Sam, hit us. Okay, so uh, hello everybody. My name's Sam, uh, and I'm going to be playing uh, Avery and Tex.exe. Hmm. Uh, Avery is a uh, young student who is really excited about uh, new technology, which is a shame because his family is very thrifty and pretty much gives him entirely hand-me-down things. Um, he's short, pale, he's got messy dark hair, green eyes, black plastic rim glasses. All his clothes look a little too big for him because they are, because they were his brothers. Um, uh, he's got a hand-me-down PET from his brother who, for some reason, was really into cowboys for like a year. So in that PET is a navvy named Tex.exe. He's like an old school cowboy with a white hat and an all white cowboy suit, gray metallic skin and shiny blue eyes. He's got a six shooter, um, and when he has to move long distances, a white horse with black spots materializes below him. Hmm. And uh, Avery would really prefer to have a more modern Navi, both in sensibility and in specs, but that's what he's got. Alright, and hello to the audience, this is Florian here, and today we're playing as Ham Antenna.exe. Uh, Ham is... He looks kind of like a stereotypical prep nerd. I mean, he's wearing slacks, a dress shirt, a bow tie for some reason. I was really uh, hoping he'd have a bow tie. <laughs> yeah, but I've adjusted it. Instead of the big plastic glasses that uh, Avery's wearing, he's got aviator shades for some reason, which which pairs kind of weirdly with the comb over. He's kind of tall and lanky, but his personality's kind of the opposite of how he looks. Well, I'm like, hey, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> big classic rock and heavy metal fan. His dad <laughs> works at a radio station or whatever audio streaming equivalent exists in the bright future of 200,000 X. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's Tenna.exe, who is sort of the radio station technician, as well as his Navi. He's kind of simple talking, but uh, very technically knowledgeable, kind of like the engineer from Team Fortress 2. He looks sort of like Elect Man, but with radio towers on his back, kind of black bodysuit thing with flared out legs, Tron style lime green lines up the suit, mm -hmm. and little radio dishes on his shoulders. And furthermore, he attacks up close with a whip antenna. Hi, I'm Nathan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Anyway, the uh, the net off I will be playing this evening is Nico Gelato, who is a uh, high school student with messy pink hair, um, held out of his eyes with hair clips that look like sweets. Uh, he has <laughs> piercing green eyes and uh, a generally upbeat personality. He's actually an Italian geography student who is here at whatever high school that we're at for this story as part of an exchange program, although he does speak very good English. He tends to carry a large backpack with all the various tools he needs for his geography glasses, including an entire camping set. He's very, very prepared. His navvy is Neapolitan.exe, who is actually a uh, promotional AI mascot for a confectionery company in Europe. Um, he, <laughs> uh, they look a bit like a Victorian teenager who's super into frosty princess fashion. Um, they have a double-breasted peacoat in vanilla white and a scarf that covers their mouth. Uh, their hair swells up and outwards like precariously balanced soft-serve ice cream atop uh, chocolate brown skin. Um, if they do happen to pull away the muffler of their scarf, uh, they have a strawberry pink lipstick on and breathe a uh, heavy, sparkling mist. And I'm Will Yule, the author of Net Battlers, and I'll be the Game Master for today. Indeed. Okay, so the class field trip for today is to the Stellar Planetarium, home of the Astro Super Program pride and joy of Core City, which is definitely where this is. Um, Mr. May, a delightful, um, delightfully exuberant young and naive um, teacher is leading all of you through the planetarium as he's pointing out like, oh, and there's a replica of Pluto back when it was a planet. <laughs> oh, Pluto. And I I want to know just uh, one little uh, vignette of 
things going through this planetarium that people were... Uh, Mr. May led the students on, or maybe, you know, each of you scuttled off to go find something interesting. Mm. Anyone want to start? Okay, sure, sure. I think mm -hmm. um, somewhere in the kind of, like, kids' learning zone, uh, there is a low-gravity experience exhibit. Hmm, and, nice. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Nico's managed to get inside with some of the other classmates and uh, opened a bag of jumbo marshmallows while in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Perfect. It's clogging everything. Yeah, I, I think uh, Ham is looking at, you know, models of satellites that uh, various space programs have launched, you know, what, whatever nation this is. It's probably going to start with a joke like, ah, there's Sedna, the moon that Natopia blew up. But no, he's looking at, you know, mo models of satellites throughout history and just how far out some of them might be now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's a scene where, like, uh, Mr. May is talking like they're moving through this room where there's this, um, like, augmented reality planet experience where all these, like, 3D, uh, mm. projected planets are around and you can, like, walk among them. And, like, as the group is, is like, leaving, Avery is, like, running up to one of the technicians and he's like, What is that running on? What's the 3D rendering engine? How does that, how does the protection work? How does... And, like, <laughs> Mr. May is, like, really frantically motioning Avery to come, like, we gotta go, buddy, and Avery's, like, <laughs> kind of being pulled away by the chaperone, like, wait, 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 but I also want to know about the specs. Yeah, Mr. May puts his hands on your shoulders and definitely steers you away, like, <laughs> oh, buddy, I'm glad you're so enthusiastic about this place. <laughs> that is great, and we can spend some time researching that for your next paper. I'm sure <laughs> there are plenty of great online resources. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the public need to know. <laughs> Okay, and next we get to a... It, it's halfway between an educational um, experience and an amusement park ride. It's a, like, a, a human centrifuge ride, except it's calibrated to run at, like, far lower speeds so that um, kids and, you know, old people can ride in it without... <laughs> Won't die, yes. Yeah, die or get yeah. KO'd. And so... <laughs> Mr. May is like, oh man, we've we've got to get going soon, but oh, I think we can, I think we can spare some time for this. Hmm, can only fit this many people, so okay, we'll go first, and then Mr. May um, motions to the three of you. Uh oh, you three wait your turn, and you'll get to go right when everyone's done. Like a uh, Nico heftily slaps a hand on like Ham's shoulder. It's like you're going in my stead, right? <laughs> As Mr. May is climbing with the rest of the kids, he says, Oh, don't worry, all of you will get a chance to, <laughs> to ride. Great. Oh, man, I want the seat, like, if there's any kind of, like, screen in there, will you guys let me have the seat closest to it? I just kind of want to see what the what the UI is doing. <laughs> all right, all right, wow. cool, a kid. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, it's just, like, this is such cool technology, you know, like, back in my house, we just have, like, this old tube TV. Mm-hmm. Look, as long as you don't roll into the way way this thing while it's swinging, you can do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you say tube TV, and I'm picturing, I'm picturing instead it is just like a television shape, like a tube. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> um, it was very chic, like ten years ago. <laughs> we found it in a, in a dumpster. Yeah, cylinder design was all of the rage in you know twenty XDX minus ten. Um, okay, and so the the three of you are kind of, you know, ushered to stand back by some of the... what? Oh god, it's totally one of the, like, interns, high school or intern who's, you know, <laughs> getting paid minimum wage to, um, host this. And okay. the centrifuge starts spinning, and you know, you hear vroom, 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 and it's spinning, and you're like you hear a couple of like up as it starts spinning a couple of the like kids give muffled like you know whoa or whatever <laughs> then it starts spinning faster vroom 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 and it doesn't stop getting faster 
Oh. And Mr. Uh. May and all of the kids start screaming, Stop! Stop! And they're all pounding on the windows and whatnot. And one of the interns is, like, standing at the control panel and just, like, pushing buttons, um, pulling <laughs> levers, turning knobs, and it's just, like, making this constant... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> Maybe that's why it's going so fast. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this constant, like, access denied. Access denied. And <laughs> for some reason, there's also some sparks that fly out. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Depending on the friction that's being, like, forced on this machine, those sparks oh, no. might not be for show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Uh, it's, so, at this point, it is spinning quite fast. Um... <laughs> These kids are getting an early treat at a space camp, yeah. and mm. you you hear one of the interns, um, <laughs> one of them says, "Oh man, like it's got to be something in the in the control room. I'm not being paid enough for this." And then they just <laughs> go running out. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> at, as you guys um, were walking about, you saw there was a employees only door to the control room and I probably imagine Avery you probably pressed your nose to it being like you know oh can I see you know what's in there do they got some cool computers or whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you were kind of uh, pushed off by one of the interns but yeah at this point there's a lot of people screaming what are you guys gonna do well I think this is Avery <laughs> 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 I, I'm picturing Nico says that looking wholly unamused, still buying yeah. the scarf, like, hmm, this mm -hmm. seems bad. Oh, oh, mamma mia. <laughs> I think yeah. Avery's gonna, like, ch like, chase after one of the interns for a little bit, like, incorrectly assuming that he knows anything about this and is like, wait, what OS is it running on? Like, what kind of code injection are you using? And just, like, yelling techno babble at him and imagining, like, the, the intern, like, speeds up as he's running away. <laughs> they just told yeah. me to press the button, and it, the button's not working. Yeah, uh, Ham is... I, really, what can you say when the when the centrifuge goes nuts? He's, he's pretty taken aback. Mm -hmm. I assume eventually screams, Avery! <laughs> <laughs> Said something about the control room, right? Yeah, um, I actually peeked in there a little bit. I think I recognize what kind of model computers they're using. Oh, mm -hmm. well, that's well, good to know. Between you, yeah, well, between you and my Navi's brains, we can probably figure this out. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait to see your Navi. You've got one of the new pet models, right? I, look, the GT505 with I, the liquid plasma ring. We need to go. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Avery heads off towards the Yeah, lickety room. split. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nico holds open the, the staff only door that some of the other aides ran through with the uh, <laughs> yeah. assumption that the major control panel is back there. So, <laughs> I'm picturing you guys, you know, skedaddle on out of there as Mr. May is like pressed against the window, like <laughs> splattered against it. <laughs> um,. Uh. I think Avery, like, to try and uh, calm down Mr. May, just flashes him, like, a, a thumbs up with a smile. <laughs> and Mr. May probably, like, turns even greener as it's yeah. spinning around. Uh, okay, so you guys go running past um, the exhibit about the Astro Super Program, talking about how it's the pride and joy of the nation's space program, <laughs> yeah. and get to the door that leads to the um, control room, and... Nico, you know, you're saying you're gonna go hold it open. You grab the handle and turn it, and it clicks. You rattling it, and the door's locked. Oh. But there is a jack in port next to the control panel. Naturally. Mm. Yeah, with uh, with uh, his uh, single free hand with the other hand on the door, uh, he rummages inside the inside of his jacket and pulls out the kind of extension connection cable for his PT and slams mm -hmm. it into the jack in part on the lock. All right, you take the lead, Frenchy. The, the <laughs> what? The, the, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Honestly. Uh, Ham is clearly in need of education. Yeah, yeah Ham's... Ham, Ham knows he messed up, but he's... He's jacking in. Okay, yeah. so what do the three of you um, say as you jack in? Tenno, we're like... going live. <laughs> 
I feel like Avery like watches Ham jack his uh, PET in, and he's like he's like super excited about watching it go, and then he like picks up his old kind of cruddy looking PET and is like, okay, here we go, Tex. <laughs> and Jacks him in. Go, hey, go, this whole bottle's Neo. ergonomic. Oh. So the the three of you jack in. <laughs> the three of you pew 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 beam in into a miniature asteroid belt floating through space. Ah, oh, far out. Um, it's, the uh, graphics are like very um, simplified, so it actually looks kind of cute and cell shaded mm. And <laughs> there's a beach ball sized sun overhead with a yellow basketball sized planet orbiting it. Goodness, I could hold it in my hand, it's so tiny. <laughs> Uh, looking down the asteroid belt, there seems to be s some kind of like circular stargate looking ring on a distant asteroid, and it's kind of hard to make out from this distance, but it looks like there's a sleeping Mr. Prog next to it, and mm. the gravity seems pretty low, mm. but you're going to have to get past these asteroids um, in order to get over there. Interesting. So, since this portal just... is a little ways away, it might be... Um... Difficult to immediately jump to, but let's see if gravity is on our side, shall we? Yeah. Well, look at that. Guess I'm a space cowboy now. See you. You'll carry that weight. Some, um, <laughs> some people call me the gangster of love. Uh, Neapolitan, right. <laughs> Neapolitan summons a, a perfectly spherical um, scoop of ice cream and uh, uses a, a an ice cream wafer to, like, tennis racket smash it into the distance to try and send it through the portal <laughs> <laughs> so the the portal doesn't appear to be on right now but there's a little um panel next to the mr prog oh. i think tex is going to try to get to that mr prog like it, try to jump from kind of kick himself off of whatever solid surface he's on mm -hmm. and like jump from asteroid to asteroid to try and get there okay cool give me a normal speed roll so okay. that is going to be Every die that you roll that is greater than four will be a hit. Hmm. Okay, two hits. Nice. That is a oh. that's a full success. So, oh. Tex, you are able to go. Um, tell me what it looks like as you're hopping along. You know, let's say halfway through. Oh my god! So Tex rides a horse most of the <laughs> time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm imagining he just like stands up on top of his horse and like pushes off of the back of his horse, hmm. and then he. Is just like with it with a, a loud like yeehaw that meanwhile in the real world makes Avery roll his eyes. Tex just like jumps kind of uh, pinging from asteroid to asteroid like the intro to that one to, to Sonic CD basically. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And uh, let's see. As Tex is rolling along, I want someone to give me a sense roll of some kind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's. I think Tenna's staring at that sleeping prog like, oh, that boy hit right. Okay, oh. perfect. Two hits, full success. So you are, you're looking at, at the prog thinking, you know, what a lazy bum. And then you're looking at this asteroid belt and you realize as you're hopping along, one of these asteroids is no asteroid. It is a giant gray metar floating in space that hasn't popped out of its helmet. Hmm. And... It currently seems undisturbed, but Tex is going straight for it. <laughs> yelling yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> now I'm just picturing Tex repeatedly yelling yeehaw. <laughs> like, Each like, time he pushes off. Yeah, it's like yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> but anyway. It's, it's like pitch shifted to different <laughs> uh, pitches. Okay. Yee? I think I have an idea. What if I use air shot to boost him along further to avoid the Metar? <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> nice. Neapolitan, are yes. you... I want to know if you're doing anything to help this, because I think Tenna yeah. might not be able to communicate this quite in time to Tex, so <laughs> yeah. so that Tex doesn't get, you know, hit on hit on the broadside with, with an air shot um, before he has a chance to, you know, maybe put his guard up. Well, uh, um, Nico <laughs> has their own copy of the air shot battle chip. So uh, what I think Neapolitan will do is uh, also propel themselves into the asteroid belt and uh, almost like bouncing a pool ball off the side pocket of a table um, has positioned themselves on a different asteroid so uh, to kind of intercept 
uh, the direction that uh, Mr. Yeehaw is traveling in, <laughs> uh, so a Neapolitan can also fire their air shot and uh, kind of catch them in a different direction and send them towards the Mr. Progno oh. portal. <laughs> Perfect. Has anyone communicated the plan to Tex? <laughs> I think that that might be a bit of an issue, but we'll see. Tex, give me a uh, give me an easy stamina roll, and since this is easy, any die result three or greater will count as a hit. No, no greater than three. Thank you. Greater than three numbers. How do they work? Okay. Ooh, wow. Cool. Nice. Critical success. So, mm. I think with that. Um, you manage to, like, in in between a ye and a ha, you're turning yourself to say, like, wow, fellas, this is going great, or something like that. <laughs> and you see, like, both Neapolitan antenna, like, lowering their, um... Buster. Yeah, lowering their, their busters to fire some air shots at you, and you just <laughs> kind of go, like, oh boy. And <laughs> put up your arms or something, and you get, um, rocketed all the way past the second half over to the Mr. Prog. And you you do a nice, like, heroic three-point landing next to the Mr. Prog, who's currently asleep. Um, yeah, um, still. as I land you here... <laughs> Tenna and Neapolitan, both of you need to still get through this uh, asteroid belt over to catch up with Tex. Mm, what y'all gonna true. do? Um, hmm... Considering, I, I think um, Neapolitan is willing to arrive a little later than everybody else by just kind of um, propelling themselves as uh, with as much force as possible by springing off the asteroids they're currently on uh, towards the destination asteroid with the Mr. Prog and the Stargate. If I used repair, could I turn the asteroid belt into a planet? Mm. Oh, interesting. I think if you used repair, you could kind of um, you could yeah. use that to align their positioning so that it's easier for you to hop along. Sort, sort of put them together into bigger rocks. Mm -hmm. so, all right. So yeah, uh, he's going, I'm dialing in a technician! And he <laughs> draws a repair, and uh, I assume there's like a, like from the antennas on his back, there's a little beep, 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 before the uh, asteroids start collating back together. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think with that, there's a little dotted line that goes through the air that shows the different, like, randomized paths the asteroids can take, and it kind of, um, like, gets them to align a bit nicer. So, Tenna, you've done that, and Neapolitan, you're hopping along, and you get a little tripped up as you're going along because the low gravity is really weird for you. I, I think in this process of trying to propel myself towards my destination, uh, because the trajectories of the asteroids have been moved around. Uh, one of them slams uh, Neapolitan in the back really hard. <laughs> uh, however, and you can tell me uh, no if this doesn't work, uh, one of Neapolitan's navi powers is kinetic armor, which is uh, <laughs> moving a range band <laughs> upon being yeah. hit. <laughs> you know what? I, I like your spunk, kid. Mm. Um, so, so uh, Neapolitan uh, actually uh, splats into ice cream uh, upon taking physical contact <laughs> and uh, just kind of reforms on the other side of the, uh, of the wayward object of the asteroid um, and just kind of <laughs> in, in, a, in, a liquid, in a more liquid, um, malleable form continues to snake their way over. Give me a... so that is a... that's a roll. Stamina. Music. Yeah, give me a normal stamina roll for this. Sure thing. Drag kit. Eh, one success to partial. Okay, I'm making so, my way down so with, walking fast. So with one hit, that's a partial success, mm -hmm. which means mm, thing. You know, there's a there's a hitch to the plan, mm -hmm. and as you are traveling along, um, you know, kind of slurping your way past these asteroids. Uh, you're making a lot of noise as you're doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm, oh god, I'm picturing <laughs> the, like the gooey ice cream noises are really something that I'm glad I'm not going to be editing into the audio of this recording. Have you ever thrown <laughs> an ice cream sandwich down at the pavement just because you could? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Just to feel something, anything. <laughs> That's known as a flagrant waste of precious resources. Mm. As you're making all of these noises, 
you hear kind of like a uh, hurt, hurt, hurt noise higher above, and oh, you look up and you see that the tiny sun and asteroid from before have turned to reveal they were a Metar virus and a Flamey. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I want to go to Tex, who Tex, you've landed next to this Mr. Prog and you know, gotten yourself stood up. And now you've got this, you know, slumbering prog ahead of you. And, and behind you you've got these two viruses descending from the from the sky onto your friends. What do you do? Uh, I think Tex is, uh, after landing, is a little bit unaware of the, uh, <laughs> of the, the chaos going on behind him. So he just sort of approaches the, the prog and is like, Hey, you hit the whiskey a little too hard last night? Why don't you tell me a little bit about this here town? <laughs> My apologies to anyone actually from the south. <laughs> um... Okay, so I think the the Mr. Prog kind of like, you know, blinks and is like, uh, uh, Oh, goodness! What? I ha I wasn't asleep on the job, that's ridiculous! Uh, okay, challenge, what what hat is this Mr. Prog wearing? Oh, he's got an ast- like an astronaut, um, <laughs> oh, helmet. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he's, is, he's, is he even wearing it, or is it just on top of his head? Oh my god, it's on top of his head because of the flat- <laughs> His little flipper hands can't fit it down. <laughs> that's perfect. Either that or astronaut gloves, which are over his, his oh. flippers. Either are beautiful, and I'll leave that up to the audience to decide what's real. But anyway. Go to the phones. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it, the, the prog looks at you and says, w w What are you doing here? You don't look like an employee. Well, I'm not really from around here, but uh, there's some real chaos going on outside, and we're trying to figure out what's what. Oh, is, is something... Ah, what's that? And the Mr. Prog, um, like, jumps up a couple feet into the air, looking at a flamey virus, which is rocketing towards you. Ooh. And I want to know, um, Tenna, you and Neapolitan have both make, uh, made your way along these asteroids. I'd say both of you are roughly halfway along. Tenna, you see a flamey virus that is, like, rocketing towards, um... Tex, as Tex seems completely unaware. Uh, and there's also a, a Metar that is falling from the sky, or I guess okay. falling from above, and will be landing relatively near you with that sharp and shiny pickaxe. What do you do? I think Tana's gonna be a bro and take aim at that flamey. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do now I wanna say. Normally he'd take the shot, but I'm gonna uh, on his own. But given the distance, I think I'm gonna use lock on to make it an easy roll. Mm. Okay, nice. E and I will have the flamey roll its speed to try to dodge. All right, and easy rolling four dice because of the lock on reduction. And Ooh. oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, Oof. dice are mean. So yep. <laughs> because you got zero hits and the flamey got one hit. One is greater than zero, so the flamey didn't end up taking any damage. I think there's some like uh, radio waves that just go kind of you woo 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 past the yeah, flamey or something re like that. Regrettably, you can't really hurt someone <laughs> by turning a radio on. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Neapolitan, what about you? There's a Metar that's going to be um, landing on Tenna's asteroid and probably busting that thing to bits. But there's also a flamey heading straight for Tex. What you about do? these metals busting asses? Um, okay, so I think since the flamey didn't take damage from the last attack, uh, mm -hmm. Neapolitan pulls over his shoulder a, a, a shoulder-mounted ice cream cannon um, oh. and uh, take, takes aim, although without using lock-on, and fires a missile barrage of uh, wafer ice cream cones at the mm -hmm. uh, flamey with the intent to douse it. Shrapnel in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so... Oh yeah, these things are covered in sprinkles. <laughs> okay, yeah, you'll roll sense and I'll roll speed for it again. Ooh, uh, dang. Ooh. This... <laughs> this matches is, yeah. again. <laughs> this is a lucky flamey. Ah. As... As I think... Oh yeah, we mm. totally get a, like, close-up of... 
ice cream whizzing past its, you know, this flaming totem <laughs> as it melts as it gets near it. And Tex, now we get to you as mm. you are just like, you know, standing there at the Mr. Frog who just shouted in pure primal fear. <laughs> and this, you're feeling a little hot under the collar, or at least at the at the back of your neck. Uh, what are you gonna do to try to um, protect yourself from this this flamey? Because they are mere moments away from uh, making collision. Tex has this uh, has this innocent life to protect. Uh, so I'm gonna do the cliche get down, Mr. President, um, and I'm gonna like try to kind of jump at the frog to push him out of the way of the flamey, and hopefully. Uh, we'll all kind of land on the ground and the flame will fly over us. Okay, so give me a speed roll to try to make Mr. Progadin get down. And let's see. Oh, okay. Ooh, and this is popping a thing of code inject. Oh, wow, the flame is not being. Wow, the flame oh. did not beat that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the. Okay, so there's just a. Um, yeah, just a fireball whizzing through the air. And you manage to grab the Mr. Prog and, you know, get the two of you down to the floor as the flamey zooms by. And I think, you know, orbits around the uh, asteroid you're on and starts looping around for another attack. But good evasion. What do you say to the <laughs> to the Mr. Prog after you've <laughs> certainly um, saved its biscuit? I <laughs> say... Usually I don't like to get that friendly that fast, but uh, that was an emergency. <laughs> uh, the Mr. Prog looks at you with, speechlessly with shining anime eyes. Um, <laughs> okay, Tenna, you've got a metar that has um, you know, bit onto your onto your asteroid. Mm -hmm. It's raising up its pickaxe. It is going to try to shatter the asteroid that both of you are on. Metars were not known for their intelligence. Hmm. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna try to strike him down before he can do it. Tenna's gonna reach up one sleeve of his suit and pull out like a whip antenna that you'd see on the front of a jeep. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's gonna, you know, spin around before hopefully whipping the Metar across the face. Cool. And I'm going yep. to have the Metar's role be upshifted to defend against this, making it harder. <laughs> Because it is cr <laughs> mm, Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm gonna roll just for yucks, but uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> tell me what it looks like as you, as you, delete this cute and innocent angel. <laughs> so pure. Yeah. Oh boy, it's not just one one slash across. Well, it's one very beautiful, very fast whip across that doesn't seem to do any damage at first until. The top half of the metar starts to slide off. <laughs> oh my god! Before, <laughs> before it bursts apart into, into junk data. Did, did you just rules of nature this metar? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I I can't even think of a thematically appropriate uh, one-liner for this one. It's <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Looks like we're taking you off the air. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, Neapolitan, you've still got to get across some of these asteroids, but there's also the uh, Flamey who is um, swinging around, making it making a decently big arc, but it seems to be coming in your direction. The Flamey's still you gonna alive. Do? Okay. Uh, well, uh, Nico uh, slots in the battleship Bubbler, which uh, douses a nearby target in a cloud of bubbles. Uh, since the flamey is, as everybody knows, on fire, uh, this <laughs> may be a pretty good way to uh, stop it in its tracks. So, uh, while still free-floating between the different gravities of these asteroids, um, Neapolitan um, managed to manages to line up a shot and sends like an entire upended case of bubble tea <laughs> at this flamey to try and put it out. <laughs> Nice. And I'm going to have the Flamey's defense on this. The defense be upshifted because, boy, as as you pointed out, uh, a big old ball of water would probably not do the Flamey any favors. <laughs> Ooh, nice. And right. so, get wet. So, Bubbler <laughs> is a two damage chip, so you. And because you're using a battle chip, you don't even need to roll for it. So, this upended T set. 
or a teacup of. Is it a cup or a? Have you not had it, bubble tea before? It's kind of like a uh, tall yeah, actually, takeaway cup oh. of. Uh, yeah, no, I I do know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, just that... kind of shotgunned out the end of a cannon into this flaming. <laughs> <laughs> and oh god, there's like a close up on the side of it, and I'm picturing some kind of like Neapolitan cafe brand um, mm -hmm. on it that's like some obvious ripoff of Starbucks. <laughs> and then it just like solidly chunks into the top of the um, flamey as you hear a uh, loud hissing noise as its uh, flames get, get extinguished and it starts kind of like swerving around in space. Mm -hmm. Clearly um, lost and confused with this big old cloud of bubbles getting in its way. My whole world was fire, and now it's extinguished. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tex, is there something you want to do here? As sure, I, I mean, I think with that uh, with that flamey curtain, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to try and kind of put it out of its misery. So uh, I'm gonna try and take my six shooter and shoot a ranged attack at it. Okay, cool. This is going to be like a very well lined up shot. Uh, when Tex shoots, he actually closes one of his eyes, and the other one turns into like a red laser sight. Mm -hmm. oh. Nice. Um, so this this flamey is kind of like flying back and forth, and Tex is like watching it go back and forth, and like his aim is right as it swings back to the left, he shoots it mm. and hopefully hits. And I'm upshifting the flamey's defense again because. Oof. <laughs> ah. <no. laughs> Yeah, oh, oh god, I know exactly what happens. <laughs> it turns out <laughs> bullet physics are a little weird in outer space, and I'm, oh. and I'm kind of picturing, like, yes, this is like low-grav outer space, so it's more like, you know, moon, mm -hmm. but I'm picturing just for comedic effect, it, <laughs> the bullet comes out and it's just like moving at one-tenth speed out of the, <laughs> out of the gun. <laughs> and you, you look at it and you're like, I'm, I'm going to need to recalibrate some of these. Yep. <laughs> uh, if this is not how space works, please write to Elon Musk at SpaceX.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, he, <laughs> he might need to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Tenna, the, the flamey is it's working its way out. Um, I think it's actually reeling back towards where Tex is. But the two of you still need to make your way along these asteroids as they're actually kind of starting to drift apart from each other now. So if, you, if you two wait much longer to, to get across, it's only going to be getting harder to get there. Mm, okay. All right. G given the circumstances, I think uh, Tenna's going to make a run for it. Okay. Also, the Mr. Prog has been screaming the entire time, <laughs> which, yep. which probably uh, also contributed to Tex missing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Is this still is this still downshifted or anything due to the repair or? Uh, yeah. I'll I'll let this first yep. roll be easy. All right. Okay. Ooh, nice. nice. Yeah, you're able to hip hop along and manage mm -hmm. to uh to land right next to Tex and the uh, positively petrified Prog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just looks at uh, Texas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Tex does like a little a little stalwart nod and it's as if they've shared like years <laughs> together in that moment okay and Neapolitan uh yeah no I I think if this is the point where uh, I can land safely and continue to pursue you now would be a good idea to start looking at the Stargate yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you you want to make a speed roll to get over to that Stargate, then... Yeah, let's easy. actually get there first. Let's make that speed. <laughs> Boop. Hey! Flying to you. Okay, very nice. So partial partial success. Uh, I want to know who who helps um, Neapolitan get there. You don't need to roll anything. I just want to know who's going to be, you know, good, you know catching Neapolitan or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, that seems like a Tex kind of thing. No, yep. oh, oh. bridal carry me to the start. I was really hoping it was going to be a bridal carry. Yes, yep. <laughs> he's, he's just like, all right, darling. <laughs> <laughs> New ship discovered. <laughs> yeah, just just a bridal carries you over there. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Neapolitan okay. flash like uh, flutters their long white eyelashes at you. <laughs> <laughs> And while <laughs> while Tex and Neapolitan are, are having a moment, Tenna, you see the flamey has burst from its um, plastic bubble tea shell 
and is rocketing at your asteroid, it's not aiming at at any of the Ooh. three of you. It's aiming at the asteroid itself to just break through it and shatter it to pieces. Uh, what are you going to do to stop that? You know, can I just put Rock Cube in the way? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Just... Uh, I, I mean, maybe that'll impede it a little. Yeah, it'll, it'll I, definitely impede it. Um, it's So the flame is going to be rolling shatter. I think that'll take it from a normal ro roll to a hard roll. Yeah, and if it doesn't get through, it's stuck for uh, for an easy follow-up <laughs> attack. Very true. Or by right. me buying y'all enough time to uh, slip through the gate. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's turning some radio dials on his chest like an Etch-a-Sketch until it forms, uh, <laughs> forms the rock cube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I'm picturing just get like a close up of, of the flamey as it's, you know, burning white hot, vibrating intensely, mm. and then just clang as it slams into the rock cube, and you just. <laughs> there's just a, a uh, flamey shaped indent in it as yep. it's like trying to slowly bore its way through, but <laughs> it, yeah. the density of the asteroid is uh, a lot less than this um, big old cube of rock. And now that's the power of hard rock. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what's happening? Uh, are, you guys can't be bad guys. I mean, you've been deleting the viruses. That we're, do you need to get through? Absolutely. Don't worry, we're the sheriffs in town. <laughs> well, okay, where, oh, yes. <laughs> where, where are you trying to go? I can... I, I, oh, oh gosh! The, the Mr. Prog is sweating profusely in a way that only Mr. Progs can. <laughs> and it's, um... It's like hovering over the... Or, you know, standing right in front of the... Um, control panel for the... Um, Stargate and going. Oh, oh ju okay. Just uh, you guys need to go to the. Uh, is, is there something bad happening with the uh, with the animatronics? So uh, did did Neil get loose again? No. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna so, say there's a mm. bunch of people out there getting spun way faster than they're supposed to be. Mm. We Sorry, gotta is, is the, and figure out what's going on. Is Neil this version of the. <laughs> this version of the Five Nights at Freddy animatronic accident is <laughs> so the Buzz Aldrin punched someone in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the prog goes the the wait a second the centrifuge why holy those those have to be manually operated oh jeez mm. and the prog starts um using its big old head flippers oh god it's totally like mashing its head into the control panel so it can reach the <laughs> so that it can reach all of the <laughs> buttons and dials and you're seeing all of these symbols get locked and like chung 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 along the side of the stargate the mr prog is kind of freaked out and is fumbling this a little bit and the flamey is is uh slowly boring through the rock cube i want someone to tell me what they do either to give the mr prog the courage it takes to finish locking in these coordinates or something to um, maybe uh, impede the flingy some more. Oh my god, I have the cutest idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Um, so the Mr. Prog's like freaking out. Tex has a little like sheriff star badge on him. <laughs> he uh. takes off the sheriff star badge, mm -hmm. puts it on the Mr. Prog, and is like, listen now, buddy, you're the <laughs> sheriff, and sheriffs can do anything they set their minds to. <laughs> 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 <Perfect>. <laughs> In, oh my god, in doing that, the Mr. Prog's hat shines bright white and transforms <laughs> into a cowboy hat. And, oh, I love it! And um, it gets a determined look on its face as it locks in the coordinates with <laughs> with powerful speed. <laughs> and the, uh, the Stargate um, comes to life as you see a big old wormhole um, pop in, in in the middle Okay, y'all, it's, you gotta save the day. I'll stay here and make sure you guys have a good way out. Mm. Good luck. <laughs> and the Mr. Prog winks at the three of you. Oh man, I just give him a salute. I'm like, those varmints don't stand a chance, kid. And I go through the portal. Mm -hmm. Nothing but respect for our troops. <laughs> <laughs> no stolen valor here. Uh, Neapolitan <laughs> yep. politely curtsies and steps through the portal. 
Okay, and I think... Yeah, just charge him. <laughs> just as the uh, the last of you step through the portal, you hear the sound of the Flaney breaking through the rock cube and the Mr. Prog um, screaming, Ah! As the, <laughs> as the Flamey nearly misses it. So the three of you are going through this massive wormhole. It is a very... Mm. Psych- this is a very psychedelic... Uh, 2001 a space odyssey space odyssey experience i'm curious Ooh, what what all your reactions are to this <laughs> tex is like whoa did that take one shot too many of jameson's moonshine <laughs> yeah well as you said there there is no chair to grip the handles of but he kind of kind of doing that motion anyway mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, in the final sequences of 2001 the space odyssey like the colors change every time the main character blinks um, it's like that, except the flavors that make up Neapolitan switch to different flavors, whereas mm. like we go through different color dimensions to the destination. I think Tex notices the uh, notices the shifting colors and is like, "Hey, lack the new do, darling." Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, oh man, Tex is running finger through it. It's mint choc chip, and he offers some <laughs> to you. <laughs> Oh man, Tex is winning the the hearts of the generation. <laughs> and the the three of you pop out on standing on a tiny um, replica of Saturn, uh, specifically on its rings, in a miniature uh, model of the solar system. Ooh, okay. Uh, in in the distance near Earth, you see a light green navi with a blocky torso and a sizable humming orb instead of legs. Mm. Oh. Um, two nervous-looking red eyes glow from behind a visor, and hovering around its orb is a flat orange ring, much like Saturn's. Mm. Uh, above it, there is a holographic projection of a... Very thin and angry looking man, a, a wiry researcher with large round glasses and a white lab coat. Um, you can, despite the uh, low resolution, you can make out their greasy, shaggy hair with a few gray blue streaks through it. Mm. Um, the, the Navi is facing away from you and says, <laughs> Doctor, are you, are you sure about this? I mean, I don't know. Uh, you you really think they'll treat us better? And the the scientist just says they targeted astrophysicists. Astrophysicists. Oh. We're a group of people who will sit for hours, days, <laughs> even weeks on end performing some of the hardest, most mentally demanding tasks over and over and over all for nothing more than a faraway dot named after us. <laughs> These people honestly think this is a battle they can win. They take Pluto. We're already finding hundreds of new planets. They take our space colony plans. Astrophysicists will make our own without you. You think calling me sleep deprived and obsessed and insane is gonna change me? I've been called worse things by pubescent tour guides paid under minimum wage. Astrophysicists are competitive, hardcore by nature. We love a challenge. The worst thing they did in all of this was to challenge us. They're not special. They're not original. They're not the first. This is just fishing for another research grant. Je suis Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and then the... Uh, the astrophysicist seems to like snap out of their bitter battle trance uh, from their diatribe and sees the three of you behind um, Astro Man and dot exe and says, "What, Astro Man? They're here to stop us, but they don't know what we've got in store. We're gonna steal the Astro Super Program and sell it to Elan Muck of Space Z, and we'll be set." <laughs> uh, Astro Man says. Okay, you got it, Dr. Comet. Let's do it. Uh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he used the space pro- Yeah. He used the Astro program to make good tasting space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks okay. for taking it there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Astro Man is currently floating in the air right above Earth. Mm. Um they have raised both of their arms in the air and you're you're seeing the um 
asteroid belts start to kind of like bend around them. Mm. Uh, this is a, it's actually kind of a tiny um, model of the um, solar system. So Astro Man is in far range to you guys, mm. but you guys will be able to get there pretty quickly if you can, you can hustle. Let's see, let's go to Tenno. What you gonna do? I think just going to try to jump from planet to planet on this one, or... Okay, sure. Um, yeah. Okay, so right now the, the planets, when you came in, the, you know, as, as they say, the stars were aligned, but right now they're kind of like uh, falling out of, um, falling out I of alignment, it. so I'm gonna give you a choice. You can either hop on, <laughs> you can either hop on Neptune and get a little wet on the way there, or let's see, what's another? Um, oh God, I. Is it Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or or you can uh, hop on Uranus and get um, get some gas that might uh, fog your way. I've I actually think can I try to use coding to uh, adjust the simulation? Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. And also, if I have screwed up the order of the planets, please send your complaints to send it to Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Space Z. Yeah. Yes, please, please <laughs> at Elon Musk. All right. Uh, so we're gonna try to use coding and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this will be. I guess try to try to try to realign them. Cool. So this will be a normal coding roll. All right. Oh. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Two hits. Tenna... So that is a full success. Nice. Yeah, antennas and antennas on his back while radio towers start pinging the server and trying to work his way in there to start adjusting coordinates. Just bouncing back and forth while he's got uh, two fingers to to his temple. Like, well, mm, mm. <laughs> and uh, we're in. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think you see kind of like the planets that were you know drifting apart, kind of like slow down and then just reverse course. Mm. Um, let's see. I'm gonna make a roll for Astro Man, who is having a ball of a time over there. Uh, okay, Ooh. wow. So that is three hits. That is a critical success. The asteroid belt that is swirling around at Astro Man's, um, swirling above Astro Man is getting denser and denser and larger and larger. Mm -hmm. um, Neapolitan, okay. what do you do? The the stars have aligned. The path is straightforward. What are you going to do? Nice. Um, something that people may or may not know that the uh, rings of planets like Saturn are largely made of icy rock. <laughs> yes! Oh, nice! Oh, man. Oh. oh. I love what you're going with Which this. is not necessarily a thing I control, but I can probably ice skate on that pretty good. Um, nice. So I, uh, I I kind of want Neapolitan to uh, Sonic the Hedgehog grind on uh, the <laughs> rings of Saturn to gain momentum and uh, swoosh their way um, towards oh, the assailant. So good. Uh, do you want this to be a speed roll or an affinity roll? Because this I'd is... like this to be an affinity roll, please, so I can actually Perfect. do it. <laughs> this, this definitely falls under the purview of your element. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, just for the audience, what is your element? Ah, uh, my, uh, my element is ice cream. Ice cream, perfect. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is definitely Surprising for me. absolutely no one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yep. So this will, yeah, this will be a perfect, yeah. yeah, normal roll, and you get two hits off of that. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> in in the music, I'm picturing uh, there's a brief interpolation of one of the like last tracks from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle as you strike a mm -hmm. similar uh, grinding City pose. Escape. <laughs> there is a, a, a uh, internet style mashup of Radical Highway and one of the songs from Yuri on Ice. As uh, <laughs> as Neapolitan what a um, combo. slides down one side of the rings of Saturn, uh, in their wake the icy rock turning into a raspberry ripple. As uh, <laughs> lovely. Yep. Uh, oh, is is, so is anybody else also kind of near me when I start this when I start this slide? Because I might grab them by the hand and drag them yeah. along. Okay. I knew it. We're getting a skating partner. Tex, I mean, your move. <laughs> we're already rocking this ship, so if you want to grab Tex by the hand as a skating partner. Hell yeah. Okay, 
So, Tex, if if you want to ride along, I'm gonna want I'm gonna want some kind of roll out of you. It's gonna be easy because, I mean, I love everything Neop Neapolitan's doing right now. Mm -hmm. It's great. Oh, okay, that light just died. So, <laughs> my the it's overhead light I had going for my space. webcam. <laughs> yup. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Tex, what are you gonna roll? Maybe like a speed roll to. Um, to go alongside or a yeah a speed roll to keep up i think is okay and what I'd like. this is gonna be easy flying into yeah. space <laughs> oh okay. yeah yeehaw yeah the the two of you oh god as okay what cool trick do you do as the two of you um rail transfer from saturn onto another planet that's closer <laughs> oh man i definitely want tex to do like a triple axle yeah yeah, um, I, I, I think this is uh, a thing where we uh, have grabbed each other's hands and are kind of spinning round um, on a focal point. And within that spin, um, Neapolitan then manages to give like a giant swing and uh, fling uh, Tex um, into deep space as they, <laughs> as they axle spin at high speed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so it turns out that <laughs> Saturn is actually closer to Earth than Uranus or Neptune, so yes. glad we didn't do that. But, um, <laughs> okay, the the two of you uh, hop on to Jupiter, and you're now within a near range of Astro Man, who is... Okay. Actually, no, I, I said he was above Earth, so he's still above Earth. He's pulling the asteroids from the belt. Uh, Astro Man is going to... Let's see... I can sort of see what's coming here. <laughs> so Astro Man, with one hand, is still holding over his head to um, get all of these get all of these meteors ready. But with the other one, Doctor Comet, you can see he's still got the um, video feed up, and he's fumbling with something. And um, Astro Man is holding a holding a hand expectantly, like something's going to appear in it. Mm. Hmm. Uh-huh. I, I think I think I could use coding to try to fling something at the asteroid. Well, like, fling a planet at the asteroids <laughs> to intercept the incoming stuff. <laughs> Alright, which of these planets won't you miss? <laughs> <laughs> Please fling Pluto. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Comet is so bitter about Pluto and it's the oh, dumbest man. thing. Aren't well, we all? the... But I don't know if it'll be able to take as many hits if it's that small. <laughs> it's the emotional damage that counts. Let's be real. All right, all right. We're gonna. I'm gonna try to throw uh, adjust Pluto's orbit to bring it into the way of what I assume is an inevitable attack, <laughs> just to protect my oh, to protect sure. my compatriots. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Give me a give me a normal coding roll. All right. We've had such a good run so far. Don't blow it now. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So. With that full success, I think you see Pluto kind of um, wobble out of orbit, and yeah, it actually, because it's kind of like stopped before it was being suspended there, but I think yeah. you mostly gave it like a little bit of momentum uh, upward, so it will go over the other planets, but it, it is basically being sucked in by the sun right now. Oh, um, yeah. With <laughs> Astro Man in, in its way. Yeah, so he's like controlling it from the server, but waving his hand around at it to try to. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit to build up the speed to get there. Um, oh. Doctor Comet goes slot in meteors, and you see oh. a scepter appear in Astro Man's hand, and distantly from from a far off solar system, you see like five. Um, twinkles <laughs> and then they start getting bigger and bigger and these are to a very different scale than the rest <laughs> of this as these um, five meteors are going to be raining down on all of you intermittently um, there is one that is going to be uh, it's actually currently aimed at Mars mm. um, to kind of you know cut off the way so I'm going to say Tex, you, yeah. you're in near range to Astro Man. There's this, um, you know, devastating meteor that's going to come down and and cut you guys off. And there's also that huge asteroid belt that he's building up over his head. Oh, and the scepter in his hand. What you going to do? 
Um, looks like the scepter is controlling a lot of his power, uh, so I want to try and shoot the scepter out of his hand. Ooh. Okay, cool. Give me a give me a normal sense roll. Okay, so because because you're not like attacking Astroman's HP, you're just trying to attack something that he's like holding. I'm not mm. going to have Astroman roll to defend against that. So that is a that is a partial success. So let's see. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm gonna give you a choice here. Okay. Uh, -oh. uh which would you prefer? Hmm. Order or chaos? Oh, chaos. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. So there's like a um a flaming gem on the top of the meteor, and your bullet shatters that, and oh, that like no. cr crackles with um red energy, and Astro Man looks at it and goes. Oh goodness! <laughs> what? What happens now? And I think everyone just looks up at the meteors and sees that they have kind of fanned out. So mm -hmm. all of the meteors are going to come down simultaneously. Uh, one's <laughs> one going on Mars, one going at Astro Man, and I think uh, the other three at each of you. All right. Okay. If I may. Yeah. Go ahead, Ta. Tana's gonna try to no clip through the uh, incoming meteor. Well, not through mm. the meteor. He's gonna jump through the planet to the other side. Okay, I like that. I like that. Give me a normal coding roll to, All right. to zoop on through to the other. Perfect. Wow, uh, I'm fortunate today. Yeah, no, you <laughs> you managed to to. Uh, I'm I'm kind of picturing this sort of has like a Super Mario Galaxy physics to it a little bit. So you kind yep. of like slip down to the other side, and then you're standing on the uh, on the bottom yeah, side I... of. I think you're on Saturn. Yeah, Tana dissolved into radio waves and just falls through. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> As I'm pi picturing a uh, incoming transmission. <laughs> yep. Okay, um, Neapolitan, you know what's going on. There's all kinds of all kinds of nuts of stuff coming down. What you gonna do? Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of valid targets immediately close to uh, our boss at the moment. So maybe I should hit them all. Um, activating a couple of different abilities at once. Oh. So uh, Neapolitan activates Code Injection, uh, which is an affinity skill. Uh, their affinity drops by one as they pull away the scarf from their mouth, and um, mm -hmm. behind the scarf being like strawberry pink lipstick and opens wide into a large smile. Uh, tundra, icy tundra um, kind of rolling out like mist um, as uh, Neapolitan extends an arm towards uh, Astro Man the, and the various and sundry asteroid debris around them and goes PK freeze! <laughs> <laughs> um, and Nico uh, pops attack plus one which okay, would add cool. uh, one chip to my next, sorry, one hit to my next non-chip attack. So uh, I would like to make a sense roll to uh, Baja Ice Blast um, everybody uh, in and around Astro Man right now. Go Let's see. I think Astro Man's going to try to resist with, hmm, I think probably stamina. Okay. Boop. Ah. Just oh, it's plus one though, so I get two successes. Okay, so you two tied the damage, but there's still the um, the code injection to deal with. So mm -hmm. I <laughs> I think what happens is um, Astro Man sees all of this coming and just uh, puts up their their arms to protect their body and their hands in front of their face. Um, actually, no, leaves their face unguarded and mm -hmm. they just get covered in ice cream and just chatter out like. Brain freeze. Yeah, yeah. No, um, every um, as as many things as possible are now encased in uh, lemon mint sorbet ice blocks as they've been frozen to the bone. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, was that was that with splash also? Mm hmm. Did he yeah. turn Earth into like a new ice age? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone yeah. is dead. The ice caps <laughs> yep. advance. <laughs> Uh, absolutely yes. I'm gonna say like half of the asteroids that Astro Man had accumulated are gone, and the rest are covered with um, 
icy ice cream, so they're now delicious comets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure you can figure out ways to have fun with that later. Tex, these meteors yeah. are, are coming down in mere moments. Um, Astro Man suffering from a really bad case of brain freeze, so he's going to have a hard time defending himself. So is Neapolitan, considering, you, you know, they were more focused on pulling off this stunning attack. I'm in danger. <laughs> Tenna's doing great, though. Uh, what are you going to do? Oh, um, and, okay. and Mars is also threatened. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about Mars. So <laughs> Fair. So what I would like to try, I, I want to do a, a, a two-fold uh, attack here. Firstly, I want to try and use speed to uh, dodge out of the way of um, my meteor, and I would like Avery to slot in air shot, and what I would like to do is shoot mm -hmm. the meteor that's coming at Neapolitan in such a way that now instead of one meteor going towards Astro Man, there are two meteors going towards <laughs> Astro Man. Oh wow. Deflected. That, that that's a tall order, but I think you could try to pull it off. Um, I'm going to want a... I'm going to ask for a hard speed roll if you want to do that and dodge yours. If... I will allow you, if you just want to take this... <coughs> excuse me, this oncoming meteor to the face, then... Or, you know, if you want to leave one meteor unaffected, you could totally spend air shot to just redirect it straight at Astro Man. Okay. Um, I think I'll be noble, and uh, I'll take my meteor and I will redirect Neapolitans. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So, that. That's power. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tex and Astro Man um, are both going to be rolling stamina to try to deal with these huge screw-off uh, meteors that are flying at them and on fire. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hey. Wow. Uh, uh, okay, so for clarity for the or for the viewers meteors is a chip that does 2 damage so each incoming meteor does 2 damage so for astro man i think even though i had him roll stamina i like this mental image more of astro man is just kind of there being you know kind of like ah, my head ah, and seeing like all of these um huge meteors flying at him and just puts his hands in, in front of his eyes and the two meteors collide with each other and explode in midair. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have what I want to happen to Tex. Go for it. So, yeah. um, he's been doing these, like, ice skate... This is really ridiculous, by the way. He's been doing these, these like, ice skating moves with Neapolitan. So as this meteor comes towards him, he starts doing a triple axle again. Mm -hmm. And his element is the Wild West. So, just, like... He's doing this spinning triple axle, and all of a sudden a whole bunch of tumbleweeds come around him and are spinning around him, and the meteor hits the tumbleweeds, and just like the tumbleweed shield text from this impact. It's leaf shield. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is that is a very colorful mental image for that. <laughs> Dr. Comet growls and says, Ah, oh, that's not good enough! Come on, Astro Man! Show him what you're made of! And... Astro Man throws his arms up, and <laughs> the asteroids do not lift up. Instead, Venus does, oh, and no. mm. and um, that at, like he's doing a uh, a kind of like a telepathic slam dunk. He's going to try to slam Venus into. I'd say probably Neapolitan, considering how mm -hmm. close Neapolitan, or, you know, Neapolitan was the brain freezer. So, sure uh, yeah, tell me what you're going to do to try to defend against this. Oh, gosh. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, Neapolitan is going to try and tank this with stamina, but, yeah, is going to try and um, body block, or even just kind of sticking out with one arm, just kind of catch miniature Venus mid-flight. <laughs> okay, now, I'm very mean, and I'm very sorry. Venus is a pretty hot place, as, yeah, as, as far as I'm led to believe. Acid. It's covered mm, Also that, so I think if you're doing this with stamina, it's going to be upshifted. Sure. Let's go. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so, in terms of how the damage for this works out, um, Astro Man attacked uh, and got two hits, Neapolitan got one hit to defend, mm -hmm. so two minus one is one. Yep. Uh, Neapolitan takes one damage. And... <sighs> it's hard to say that, like, 
there's a lot of acid, but you're definitely getting some spot burning and some of the uh, some of your ice cream melting away. Mm -hmm. into... oh, yeah, Neapolitan's <laughs> like right arm is now kind of dripping. The uh, bits and pieces <laughs> of melted ice cream refreezing again in the uh, nothing atmosphere. So Astroman's rearing up for another attack. Also, the last meteor collides with Mars and just sends Mars bits flying everywhere. So now if you want to try to get to Astro Man for some, you know, face-to-face -face fisticuffs, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to cross that gap. <laughs> so, right. let's see, who... Uh, Tenna. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are you gonna do? Well, now that I'm on the underside of these planets, I think maybe I'll start navigating over to where Astro Man is. Ah, very true, very true. Yeah, maybe just uh, sneak in there, but... Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, you want to make an easy speed roll to to cross that gap? Yep, it's just kind of low gravity leap. Yeah, again, I assume there's Mario Galaxy oh, physics because jumping underneath. <laughs> oh! Okay, partial success. Let's see. Speaking of cartoon physics, mm. uh, uh, here's what happens. You press down hard on the same planet that Neapolitan is on and actually I'm going to say on the same planet that Tex is on and this you're able to spring off very nicely but this pushes from Tex's point of view that planet up uh -oh. <laughs> and you set Pluto in motion a decent bit ago Tex I'm going to need you to do something to either get out of the way of Pluto or since it's built up some speed and it's a it's a big ol' ice rock um Either get out of the way, weather the blow, or do something so that you don't get punked. What if you grabbed it and dunked it on him? <laughs> <laughs> well, just... I'd love that. Uh, what would I have yeah. to roll to do that? Hmm. Hey, give me a normal speed roll. Okay, partial success. Always... Interesting. It's always dunking. <laughs> so, I think we'll come back to how that partial success manifests I think this is going to make you really vulnerable as you're hanging on with both hands onto Pluto as it's flying at Astro Man. You're going to be pretty vulnerable here. Unless Neapolitan can do something to either distract Astro Man mm. or make you a little less precarious. Okay. That your eyebrows very hard. Mm. Or eyelashes, rather. So, um, uh, we've not done anything in meat space for a hot second. Uh, is true. there a diorama of the solar system identical to this one in the uh, kids' learning zone? Yeah, I love that. There totally is. Cool. Um, Nico um, is like, hey, Neapolitan, you got this. And um, gives his dash attack chip to uh, Ham, being like, uh, slot this in my PET if it, gets, if it gets rough, but I'll be right back. And... Uh, <laughs> Just uh, starts scuttling their way uh, across across the learning zone um, to where the diorama is. Um, finds the the um, model of Earth that's spinning within the diorama and um, mm -hmm. flips it upside down. Just kind of like <laughs> grabs that planet and twists it so it's out of orbit. Um, um, straight, what was the North Pole is now the South Pole kind of flip. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm gonna want some kind of roll from Nico mm -hmm. to run over and do that. I think that would probably be a speed roll to, you know, leg it over there yep, in time. But he's, if you want uh, to he's, convince heavy, something else, he's carrying totally his fine. heavy camping backpack, but he's so well trained at doing that, he's actually quite speedy. So. Uh, and this will be easy because you don't really have a, um, you know, there's not really anything getting in your way. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Partial success. Mm -hmm. So. I think you, so I think the, the um, downside of the partial success here is that you manage to get over there, you flip Earth, let's see, what's one other planet that would be fun for Nico to accidentally, f oh man. Oh, he, he sets um, Jupiter free spinning, which is already <laughs> a big storm orb, so now it's a rapidly spinning storm orb. Oh boy! I've yeah. got, I've got an alternate idea which I like. Okay. Uh, I th I think you, in trying to like reach reach for it, you also bump the sun. How? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, I mean it. <laughs> it doesn't hurt in real life, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, 
Astro Man gets flipped over to the under underside and goes, Whoa! Mm -hmm. And there's also the sound of the sun just go, just, you know, mm -hmm. getting, uh, it absorbs mercury, though. So. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. It is and, very hot. And it, <laughs> and it grows, um, it definitely grows bigger mm -hmm. because of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, Tenna, you are in a pretty good position here. Um, Astro Man has been flipped over to the under underside. It, funnily enough, this is kind of, um, this has made the attack harder for Tex because, you know, um, Astro Man has been flipped out of the way, but maybe you can do something to mess with Astro Man and maybe even make, um, you know, put some damage on while you're there. What you gonna do? Yeah, I could just fire Bubbler at the sun, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> Interesting. Just gonna blast steam everywhere, basically. You know, like it's gonna be. A, I, th I feel like it would be a pretty dramatic burst of steam. At yeah, least. that would be a very dramatic burst of steam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That... Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to go for that, you totally can. Yep. And I think instead of a buster, he's just Tana's just gonna whip out a bucket and <laughs> gonna gonna the sloosh. Yeah, just gonna pour some water on this one right here. <laughs> yeah, just swings it, uh, swing a wave of it towards the sun. Yeah, the this big ol' you know, big bucket of water um, flies past Astro Man and collides with the sun. There's an enormous hissing noise, and it just rockets out steam everywhere. This, this is going to count as a normal hazard. I'm going to want everyone who is... Let's see, actually, yeah, that would be everyone mm -hmm. to make some kind of roll to somehow protect yourself or do something to protect yourself, including Astro Man, who is going to be <laughs> upshifted because he just got, you know, sent to the flip side. He's quite... His mm -hmm. goose is cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to dodge out of the way. Okay. Uh, can I roll affinity to make the area around me um, freezing cold to de totally to douse it. the temperature no. of the steam? Hopefully, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Tenna's that. just yeah. Tenna's just gonna use his stamina to get through. Is this normal difficulty? Mm. Yep, normal difficulty. Yeah. Woo! Ooh, Ooh. Okay. For normal hazard, everyone who got a total failure takes four damage. Mm. Oh. Yep. Okay. As yeah, that is a powerful. Um, burst of of white hot steam that goes yeah. rolling over both you and Astro Man as Astro Man goes <laughs> Tana can take the heat. <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point Neo is or Neo? Nico is probably back to Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. And Yeah. Uh, Tex, you failed to dodge out of the way because I I think it makes most sense because you are clinging on to that comet. Um, yeah. I want you to if you're going to be dunking on Astro Man literally with this thing, I need you to make a strength roll, and it's going to be normal difficulty. Like, part of this is just knowing the right time to just come on and slam. Sure. <laughs> and Ast this is going to be hard for Astro Man because this is like a combination attack. This is actually okay. a space jam. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even... Ugh. I really want to dunk this guy with Pluto, so I'm going to use Volley. Um, what this means is I get to roll three times and take the best roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So you are triple dunking on this sad boy. Yes. There's okay. like multiple And forgive me, what did you say the difficulty for this was? Normal? Normal difficulty. And this is hard for Astro Man because this is the result of a team-up attack. Wow. Hmm. Everybody get up. It's time to slam now. Go real jam. Oh go my god. Down. Wow. Okay, so despite... Despite that, Astro yeah. Man still manages. I think, despite it all, Pluto is still a... It's still a part of space, which is <laughs> absolutely Astro Man's element, so he's able to, um, squealing as he does so, kind of bend it out of the way. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think Pluto slips out of your grasp, but you are now in close range to Astro Man. And... Neapolitan, um, Astro Man is, he's going, oh jeez, oh jeez, this is bad, I didn't want to have to do this, and 
Um, Dr. Comet is fiddling for some more battle chip data. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you going to do, Neapolitan? So, uh, with the, the like superheated steam that blasted Neapolitan earlier, which he then cooled down, so there's a, like, a large frozen sphere around him, like a gigantic space egg. Um, and uh, um, Nico takes the dash attack chip back off Ham and uh, slots it in. And from inside the orb, uh, Neapolitan's left arm uh, gets encased in a gigantic uh, wafer cone that uh, spins at increasing uh, violent speed. And then he bursts forth from the ice sphere directly at the um, at the kind of like planetoid that uh, Astro Man is standing on uh, with a Giga Drill Breaker. <laughs> and um, basically, like, Captain Falcon punches uh, Earth to try and knock it into the sun. <laughs> now that's what I call an icebreaker. Okay, so... <laughs> he probably lodges into the Earth, so he'll probably also go careening into the sun, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing go wrong. Okay. Yep. Astro Man and Tex are on Earth, and now... Neapolitan is too. Yep. And we're all gonna die we've... and I'm sorry, but it'll save the day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> and yeah, yep. with that, um, the I don't even know what to think about this. Yeah, just it's exactly as you described this massive drill cone slamming into Earth, and Earth starts um hurtling towards the sun. I'm gonna make a speed Excuse me, a speed roll for Dr. Comet to see if he can slot a chip in fast enough. Mm. Partial success, so... Mm. Almost! Um, okay, Is that so early or late? It is going to be a little late. Um, the sun is going to be another hazard that um, y'all are going to have to withstand. That's going to be coming in just a moment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Dr. Comet is saying, Okay, slot in! Air shoes! Wait... Oh, come on, it's the other way around. Is it upside down? No, God, oh, come on. And so he's raging on the, mm -hmm. on the other end. Uh, Tenna, you have a chance to interfere with things somehow. Maybe prevent Astro Man from blasting away from Earth. What are you going to do? Or you could maybe try to rescue one of your allies so they don't get sunned. <laughs> Sundered. Well, I do have one more chip. If I slot in barrier, I can try to jump in the way. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be a human shield for, I guess, Tex. Okay. okay, so you're going to try to like jump forward and like pull Tex off of Earth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sort of thing. Well, using barrier as the sure you know, uh, extra padding. Tenna, give me a give me a normal speed roll. Guy. Oh. Nice. Okay. Two <laughs> hits, nice. full success. So you you get this uh, holographic bubble around you and as you leap forward and is this another bridal carry <laughs> <laughs> uh firefighter carry this time <laughs> okay perfect um sling tex over your shoulder <laughs> so, tex still instinctively winks <laughs> <laughs> and um you go launching back off earth is about to sink into the sun mm -hmm. And Astro Man, you know, the air shoes are going to be coming a little too late. And Astro Man says, no, 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 there's no time for that. Just to give me the cannon. And Astro Man puts their hands together and, you know, holds them forward in a, uh, you know, waiting for their chip to manifest in their arms. And it doesn't look like a normal cannon chip, but they're starting some kind of terrible attack. Mm. Uh, Neapolitan. Um, I think what uh, what Neapolitan is going to do is that with his uh, left arm encased in the drill, which is that also encased inside a model of planet Earth, um, in his like second free arm, he's going to um, change that into some kind of utensil. I guess just like a gigantic spoon. <laughs> and uh, he's going to slice his own arm off oh, to wow. disconnect oh himself uh, wow. from being ensnared in the earth. Who would have who would have guessed Neapolitan would be the, the most metal of all? Uh, okay, so 
Yeah. So you are disconnecting yourself and what then? Mm-hmm. Um, just be, with, um, with no longer, no longer like um, physically tethered to the earth. Um, he's now free floating, um, which may not oh, necessarily okay. make him a um, an evasive target from the shot from Astro Man. Um, but at least he's no longer on a death collision with the sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're not yeah, about there's... to sink into the sun. Mm-hmm. And Astro Man, um, their hands together, pointing directly at you, Neapolitan. And um, the doctor comments says, Define! Lava cannon! Slot in! Oh. Mm-hmm. And you see all of the, like, fire and flames from around the sun fly <laughs> into Astro Man's hands as he just puts like um, oh, his no. pointer fingers together as a massive fireball um, forms and <laughs> the kickback is enormous mm-hmm. so <laughs> lava cannon at, adds one damage if there's fire slash lava within near range mm-hmm. so what are you going to do to try to defend against this um big ball of fire flying right at your face. Ah, uh, um, I have a move called Reflect, which lets me use parry Ooh. rules for a projectile attack. Mmm, mm, interesting. Can I parry this, uh, lava shot? I'm gonna say yes, but it's going to... If you want to do that, it'll be hard, because first you need to, you know, um, get in, get in between. So sure. if, if you want to make a hard stamina roll, that is totally fine. Well, it's cool, so I'm going to try to do it. <laughs> okay, have fun beating four successes. Okay. So, Tex heroically leaps in in front of Neapolitan, who is, you know, free-floating in space, mm-hmm. and gets an enormous ball of fire that just, um... Oh, God. They totally get the, like, um... The cartoon ash face as just, like, entire, you know, from the shoulders up, it's just soot black mm-hmm. um, <laughs> hit, hat is blown to pieces and hair is totally blown back and Tex just gives a <laughs> and that is four damage onto Tex okay mm-hmm. how, how you doing health wise Tex uh, Tex is not looking too good Ooh. he's got one HP oh wow yeah that being said Astro Man did that as he was sinking into the sun, so <laughs> let's see how mm. he... Um, yeah, this is going to be an extreme hazard. This <laughs> this is... It's a lot, so... Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So, nice. I, yeah, Astro Man fires, you know, this shot and says, I, I did it, Doctor! I did it! Ah! And just starts, <laughs> like, letting out this blood-curdling, high-pitched scream oh, as... God. Um, you're just watching, like, they're waving their arms and trying to, you know, get themselves out of this mess. <sighs> oh god, Do- I know exactly what happens. <laughs> Dr. Comet says, Come on, Astro Man, it's like they say, feel the burn, love the burn, use the burn. And Astro Man, um, <laughs> there's like a little teardrop on their on their visor, and they nod, and they put their hands on the sun, mm-hmm. and the sun starts shaking and letting off all kinds of solar flares. Everyone's going to get a chance to do one thing. I'd say probably either like bracing for whatever terrible thing is going to happen, or um. Or trying to stop Astro Man before this gets off, or you know, whatever you want. Uh, if I can, uh, Nico is go- Nico is going to log out Neapolitan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, give me, give me an affinity roll from Nico to sure Jack Neapolitan out. Partial success. Uh, you're going to Jack out almost in time. Like you're not going to take the full brunt of the attack. Mm. Uh, you will. You'll take half of the damage that it's going to deal. Sure thing. You know, I think I'm gonna hurl hurl myself at Astro Man and try to strike him. Yeah, give me a give me an easy speed roll. Look at this. Oh. Hey, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hey, okay, partial success. So let's see. Uh here's what I'm gonna say. You can totally make a normal um a normal attack against Astro Man, but you're not going to be able to defend um, against him when he goes, um... 
Okay. Nuclear. Pretty much. And Tex, what about you? Man, I just gotta get the hell out of the way. I got one HP. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a normal speed roll? Yeah, normal speed roll. Okay. Uh, I'll, actually, I'll say this is easy because, you know, this is kind of what you're doing in preparation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Tenna, give me... Uh, you, you're seeing, like, Astroman begins to glow with a radiant, fiery energy running across his body. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of going, ah, almost <laughs> like a dork about to go Super Saiyan. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Tenna, if you're going to make an attack on him, you got to make it now. I'm going to use lock on. Yet again, going to spend that last uh, point and sense I have to get out the whip and swing it again uh, and just try to put him down before he can, uh, <laughs> before he can cook me alive. <laughs> oh uh, my perfect. god. <laughs> Did he have four health left? <laughs> he had two. So tell me what it looks like as you um, stop astroman.exe. Tenna whip pulls the antenna whip out of his um, out of his sleeve again, and he starts. He he does that same spinning uh, slash where he, he's gonna go a full 360 degrees, except the antenna enters the sun and latches on to. Astroman to hurl him up out of the sun with the force of this impact. Not not to kill, necessarily, but just to really knock the crap out of him. <laughs> just... I, I, I think you fling Astroman off with such force that, um... Oh King my god. blasting off again. Astroman absolutely says, This rocket's blasting off for now! <laughs> Ding! Ding. <laughs> and um, <laughs> with that, astroman.exe is no longer a threat, and the the door he's in orbit. <laughs> the the door opens, and you see the wiry astrophysicist from earlier going, no, 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 dodge. But I that could have had so much money. A full body tackle him. Kids, and he throws his PET on the ground, and a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of uh, interns with security hats on run in, all of, all of whom are only like four years older than all of you, <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, tackle him to the uh, to the ground and put some like really flimsy handcuffs on him, which nice. he still can't break. Plastic ones. Hey, is his PET like the newest model? <laughs> <laughs> it it is an exceedingly premium model. Oh. Okay, I think Avery runs over, swipes it, and then he looks down at his like old PT and says, "Tex, you're gonna get the home you deserve." Oh no! <laughs> Fist pump. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you hear you hear an approving <laughs> from the PT. <laughs> It's like the blues whistle. <laughs> it's like a ringtone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ham. Uh, All right. We need to dash uh, inside and yeah, find the Ham, controls. Ham's like fist pumping pretty much from the instant that that final <laughs> attack landed, and he's nice. still he's still like yeah! yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, uh, Doctor Comet's being led away. Okay, so I think from that we kind of fade as the credits are rolling by to um, Mr. May and the kids and, you know, ev everyone uh, walking out of the um, the observatory mm -hmm. as, or the planetarium, I'm sorry, as everyone except for you guys is like kind of, you know, their heads are still kind of, you know, going uh, 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 kind of <laughs> wobbling back and forth. And Mis Mr. May very wobblingly um, walks over to the four of you and says, oh, oh, you did it, kids. I'm so, I'm so proud. Oh, man. Oh. I suggest you go uh, sit down and drink some water. You, what lesson did you learn from all of this? <laughs> mm. 
I learned that just because my PET's old doesn't mean it can't pack a punch. And I imagine he, like, continues, like, going on and on about this, and Mr. May's like, yeah, that's great, cool, good. Ah, uh, the sun's, sun's really hot. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and Nico, what about you? Nico's like, cybersecurity is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, it, it helps if you can um, find some way to, if, if you know, um, sometimes you need to kind of leave the key to your locked door, like under a rock somewhere so other people can get in. <laughs> and other times you need to be able to flip the earth upside down to put something near the sun, one or the other. Security. <laughs> I think Mr. May was not able to listen to most of that due to, um, you know, still kind of recovering his balance. And he says, Nico, that's so great. I'm so glad you've learned that important lesson. Mm -hmm. Lollipop? As Tana, as Tana pipes up from the PET. That boy ain't right. <laughs> I've got enough candy okay. for everybody. Yeah, Nico has okay. ham a lollipop. Hey! <laughs> Got a load of this. <laughs> okay, I want I want one post credit scene from everyone. Mm. Oh man, I know exactly what mine is. Go for it. So uh, we zoom into um, the new PET mm -hmm. that uh, that Avery got. That's the home of uh, of Tex now. And we zoom into a saloon, mm -hmm. and him and Neapolitan are are having a drink together. Sarsaparillas. In the saloon, sarsaparillas <laughs> in in Texas home saloon. Nice. Um, Nico is uh, on the coach ride back with the rest of the field trip. Uh, their seat reclined and their feet on the headrest in front, and they're just enjoying some snacks while jamming to some <laughs> tunes. I, I think that. Ham and Tenna are trying to get Astro Man in on this DJ thing. You can hear I've got I've got a great idea for the name. Space Channel 5. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Before everyone looks at the camera. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And I I think we end on a nice shot of the um Mr. Prog with the cowboy hat and the uh Share star looking into space, knowing that someday the um, before he will be reunited. Oh, mm -hmm. the end. See you later, space nice. cowboy. <laughs> 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 Great. Yeah, that's good. it. Nailed it's it. done. <laughs>